we welcome all to the celebration of Mass here within our Kingston Channel Catholic Parish. We acknowledge and pay respect to the original and ongoing custodians of the land. We acknowledge that the continuing connection to land, seas, air and waterways and commit ourselves to the ongoing journey of reconciliation. We honour elders past and present. Please join us in our entrance hymn. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy For the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome! How great and King of light, be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. You might like to be seated for just a moment. As you know, each Sunday, I invite you to turn to somebody near you and to ask that person to be your prayer partner for our Mass today. I'd like us to take it just a little bit further. What I'd like to ask you to do is when you turn to that person, ask them, is there something that I can pray that you need at this time? Something I can pray for. It doesn't have to be your inmost darkest secret or your most challenging difficulty but just to something that might be um, for example last night somebody uh, asked me they just bought a new house that's all they said and all of a sudden I thought interest rates and the challenges of owning a new house with a mortgage and what that fear must be and so I prayed for that for his intention so it's not anything super special or super important it's just that something that's sitting on your heart at the moment that you might like to pray for ask someone to pray with you for that intention so it's going to be we'll do it at the normal time in mass but it's just asking you just to go that little bit further the reason i've asked you to sit down is because every time i try to explain something people are confused so is anybody confused <laughs> if you are don't feel upset about acknowledging that you're confused because I do it to everyone all the time. <laughs> so it's just a case of if, you, if you're comfortable with that, we'll do that today. So just when somebody turns to you and asks to be your prayer partner, just simply say, could you pray for? And that's all you have to say. So would you like to stand and we'll start again. <laughs> In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit and I invite you to turn to your prayer part or find a prayer partner and ask them for having intentions hello I'm Jan John and Jan just for you John okay I'd like you to pray for my wife
let us now place ourselves in the presence of our merciful and loving God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ's only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. From the book of Exodus. The Lord spoke to Moses, Go down now, because your people, whom you brought out of Egypt, have apostatized. They have been quick to leave the way I marked out for them. They have made themselves a calf of molten metal, and have worshipped it, and offered it sacrifice. Here is your God, Israel, they have cried who brought you up from the land of Egypt. I can see how headstrong these people are. Leave me now. My wrath shall blaze out against them and devour them. Of you, however, I will make a great nation. But Moses pleaded with the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your wrath blaze out against this people of yours, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with arm outstretched and mighty hand. Remember Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, your servants, to whom by your own self you <coughs> swore and made this promise. I will make your offspring as many as the stars of heaven, and all this land which I promised I will give to your descendants and it shall be their heritage forever. So the Lord relented and did not bring his people the disaster he had threatened. The word of the Lord.
I will rise and go to my father. I will rise and go to my father. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offence. O wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. I, I will, will rise and, and go, go to, to my, my father. father. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. I will rise and go to my Father. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. My sacrifice is a contrite spirit, a humbled contrite heart you will not spurn. I will, I will rise, rise and, and go, go to, to my, my Father. Father. From the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength and who judged me faithful enough to call me into his service even though I used to be a blasphemer and did all I could to injure and discredit the faith. Mercy, however, was shown me because until I became a believer I had been acting in ignorance and the grace of our Lord filled me with faith and with the love that is in Christ Jesus. Here is a saying that you can rely on and nobody should doubt, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I myself am the greatest of them and if mercy has been shown to me, it is because Jesus Christ meant to make me the greatest evidence of his inexhaustible patience for all the other people who would later have to trust in him to come to eternal life. To the eternal King, the undying, invisible and only God, be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God was, was in Christ, Christ to reconcile the world to himself, and the good news of reconciliation he has entrusted to us. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus to hear what he had to say. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained. This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. What man among you with a hundred sheep, losing one, would not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the missing one until he found it? And when he found it, would he not joyfully take it on his shoulders, and then when he got home, call together his friends and neighbours? Rejoice with me, he would say, I have found my sheep that was lost. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner than over ninety-nine virtuous who had no need of repentance. Or again, what woman with ten drachmas would not, if she lost one, light a lamp, and sweep out the house, and search thoroughly till she found it. And then when she had found it, call together her friends and neighbours. 
Rejoice with me, she would say. I have found the drachma I lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing among the angels of God over one repentant sinner. He also said, a man had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, let me have the share of the estate that would come to me. So the father divided the property between them. And a few days later, the younger son got together everything he had and left for a distant country where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he had spent it all, that country experienced a severe famine. And now he began to feel the pinch. So he hired himself out to one of the local inhabitants who put him on his farm to feed his pigs. And he would willingly have filled his belly with the husks the pigs were eating, but no one offered him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's servants have more food than they want, and here am I dying of hunger. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. So he left the place and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms and kissed him tenderly. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the calf we had been fattening and kill it. We're going to have a feast, a celebration, because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now the elder son was out in the fields, and on his way back as he drew near the house, he could hear music and dancing. Calling one of the servants, he asked what it was all about. Your brother has come, replied the servant, and your father has killed the calf we had fattened because he has got him back safe and sound. He was angry then and refused to go in, and his father came out to plead with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have slaved for you and never once disobeyed your orders. Yet you offered me so much, never offered me so much as a kid to celebrate with my friends. But for this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up your property, he and his women, you killed the calf we had been fattening. The father said, My son, you are with me always, and all I have is yours. But it was only right that we should celebrate and rejoice, because your brother here was dead and has come to life. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we begin, well, we're on week two of the message series that we've called What Will It Cost? And something's happened and it won't come up on, there it is. Last week we heard how Jesus was challenging those who were accompanying him on the road to Jerusalem to face an uncomfortable reality. He told them, if anyone comes to me without hating father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, and their own life too. They cannot be my disciple. And then he added another challenge. He said to them, anyone who does not carry his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. This is a theme that's been running through these last few weeks where Jesus is reminding the people that they cannot afford to be an observer, a theatre goer, watching what's going on. If we're to be a disciple, a Christ follower, it means we have to be in the midst of what is happening. And it's a good point just for a moment to think about what was the context of history at the time that Luke was writing this gospel. It's about the year 70 
the temple in Jerusalem has been destroyed and the people have been subjected to incredible persecution and torture. So when they're talking about carrying their cross, they're not just recognizing that Jesus carried the cross to his suffering and his death, but then through the glory of the resurrection was restored to us. But here, these people are thinking of their own family and friends, people whom they knew who have also been subjected to the cross, the persecutions that followed the death of Jesus. So when he's talking about carrying the cross, he's not talking about something that we might think is a sickness or an illness for us to bear. The people were hearing that this was that what could happen if they were arrested for being a Christ follower. So if you were a member of a family and part of your family wasn't really supportive or encouraging of you being a Christ follower, then they could report you and you could be arrested and you would be crucified. So Jesus' words, unless you're prepared to give up your life and carry my cross, then you cannot be my disciple. They're not idle words. They are words that impact incredibly on the life of every single person who is there. And so Jesus' words here are really, really challenging. They're putting right into the midst of what's happening the reality that so many people were actually experiencing. We know that the support of those around us is important. And if we find that we're not getting that support, if we're not being encouraged in our faith, then things can go very badly wrong. And we hear a situation like that in our first reading from the book of Exodus today. Moses has been called to the mountaintop to receive from the Lord the Ten Commandments, the law of the people of God, to renew the covenant that God had created for his people. The people are down in the valley, and like everyone who's sitting around waiting, there's a sense of impatience. What's happening? Why are we here? We've all heard kids saying, why are we waiting? Why are we here? What's it about? And the people were like that. And so they went to Aaron, and Aaron foolishly accepted, I've got to do something to keep them quiet. I've got to keep, do something to keep them under control. And so he asked for them to bring their jewellery, their gold, and he made for them a molten calf. He wanted to stop them complaining against God and in fact did exactly the opposite to what God really wanted. And so we hear God say to Moses, leave me now, my wrath shall blaze out against them and devour them. But even in the midst of God's anger, there is still hope for the people because God says to Moses, of you, however, I will make a great nation. Now, a few weeks ago, we heard Abraham with his audacious prayer trying to save the people of Sodom. If I can find just 10 good men, will you save the people? And God said, yes. So Moses, in a similar kind of vein, looks to God and says, Lord, should, why should your wrath blaze out against this people of yours whom you brought out of the land of Egypt? Remember Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So Moses pleads with God, please don't do this to your people. Give them another chance. And we know that as God relented with Abraham, he says to Moses, God relented and did not bring, out, bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. If we were to read just the Old Testament, we would have an image of God who for the most part is a vengeful God, a judging God. There are some books in the Old Testament, the book of Hosea is one of them, where God is shown to be a merciful God. But fairly frequently that we speak and hear about how God punishes his people for their uh, iniquities, their sinfulness. And so there is a sense that it's only when we start to read the gospel passages and the letters of the New Testament that we see an image of God which is not a judging God, but rather a merciful God. And that becomes very clear in the letter of Paul to Timothy, our second reading today, where Paul says very beautifully, mercy was shown me because until I became a believer, I had acted in ignorance and the grace of the Lord filled me with faith and with the love that is in Christ Jesus. Paul recognises that it's not a punishing God 
who rules the, the earth, but a God that we've been introduced to through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, a merciful God, a God of love and kindness. Because Paul then goes on to say, one, makes, tell us one of the great truths of the New Testament when he says, here is a saying that you can rely on and nobody can doubt. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Not to destroy, but to save. And that brings us, of course, to the beautiful readings of uh, Luke chapter 15, the Gospel of today. But before I read anything about that, I'd like to just uh, start with some comments from Sister Mary McGlone, an American scripture scholar and writer. I read this and I thought, this is just a, a slightly different um, take on what the readings are about. And she has a, a different way of expressing it. She says, today's scene opens with some goody two-shoes complaining that Jesus ate with unworthy people. It probably wouldn't have bothered them that much had they not also eaten with Jesus. You see, in their religious culture, eating with something, someone was kind of a spiritual union. Thus, if one night Jesus ate with the local clergy and the next night with the riffraff, then the two were the same. Now, both crowds might have, in fact, taken that as an insult, but it was the religious types who became vocal about it. So in reply, she says, Jesus prepped the crowd for one of his most famous stories with a couple of outlandish prequels. First, he suggested that a shepherd might leave 99 sheep to wander off the nearest cliff while he went chasing for the one that had wandered off from the flock. And then he tells the story of a woman so distraught about losing one coin that she wore down her broom, used an oil, all the oil in her lamp to search for it, and then threw a party that surely cost more than the lost and found drachma. With the audience warmed up for the clincher, Jesus opens with the line, a man had two sons. We've seen before that Jesus has a sense of humour and he has a sense of irony that when he speaks into people's lives, he's really asking them, think about this. Just think about what I'm telling you and recognise that I'm having a go at you that I'm challenging you to think differently from the way you've always thought. So then we have this beautiful story, the story we call frequently the prodigal son, but it could be called the lost son, or it could be the unforgiving son, or it could be the prodigal father. It doesn't matter what name you use or whatever you think of the story. The image of the forgiving father is an incredibly powerful image. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at all the different parts of the story. I'd just like to focus on one aspect. And that's the image of the father waiting for his son, hoping that he might come back. The parable tells us, while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms and kissed him tenderly. This image of the father waiting reminds me of a story that I was told when I was in Ireland in 2001. It was the story of Mary Robinson, the Irish pre president who, who was in charge from 1990 to 1997. In Dublin, the Vice Regal Lodge is in a huge park called Phoenix Park, and it's part of the road that takes you out of Dublin towards the north. She put a lamp in an upstairs window as a symbol, lighting the way for the Irish immigrants and the emigrants and their descendants, welcoming them home to Ireland. Now remember back in the 70s and 80s, a lot of the young people left Ireland looking for some kind of hope somewhere else. But then in the uh, IT boom of the late 80s and early 90s, Ireland became what they called the tiger uh, economy and people came back. But this lamp was saying to them that they were welcomed and that they were wanted. That image of hope, a static light in the story of the Irish president, but the running father in the story of the gospel speaks so powerfully about what God's love really is about. 
because what the father did was totally and completely out of character. No one would have thought that the father running down the road, chasing this son who would have still been, just think about it, in the clothes he'd worn in the pigsty, and his father, dressed in his normal garments, runs down the road and embraces him. There is no decorum at all in this action. It is total and complete love. And so Jesus tells this story, and the scribes and the Pharisees would have been beside themselves with anger that Jesus could tell a story about a man so diminishing himself in the eyes of others that he was a laughingstock. And they would have thought, what is this man talking about? And yet what Jesus was saying was that the love of God is like that. It's not something which is tied up, but it is so full of em embracing love that it is capable of reaching out without respect, without kind of concern for what others think, to embrace the lost son. The far these parables where Jesus is telling these three stories, is saying to the tax collectors, the sinners, the Pharisees, and the scribes, telling them about a God, an image of God that is so totally different from what their old law had told them about a vengeful, judging God. He's saying to the people that God wants us to be his sons and daughters, and that we're all invited to become part of the kingdom of God, no matter where we are at the moment. It is that coming back to God and to be embraced in his love, which speaks about the kingdom. But that's the real kicker. We have to come back. And we have to start the journey to walk into the presence of God. Sadly, the Gospels tell us the scribes and the Pharisees were more concerned about the rigid letter of the law. Jesus is saying it's the love of God which is the most important. Now, as I've said on previous occasions, the rejoinder, don't go and break the law. What it means is that if we do break the law, then God's forgiveness and God's love is embracing and welcoming us back. The story of the gospel has us with walking with Jesus as he comes closer and closer to Jerusalem. And he's going to keep challenging his listeners and his followers to know that the love of God and embraces each and every person equally. There is no distinction. God embraces each one of us as we are. And he wants us to love others in the same way, to be open to their needs and to respect who they are so that together we may come into the kingdom of our God and know the fullness of his love and mercy. Together let us now make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My friends, the Lord listened to Moses who pleaded for his people. With Jesus, who brings us to the Father, let us now ask for what he ne we need to be faithful. 
that the church will always find ways to seek the lost. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have been victims of abuse may receive healing from their pain. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who feel rejected or abandoned, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That our children preparing for first Eucharist may know the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that the sick will know they are not forgotten. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died will enjoy the reward of eternal life, especially Mark Doran, Queen Elizabeth, Anna Lou Bernard, recently deceased. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will answer the prayers of this community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our prayer partner. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 hear our prayer. prayer. We join together as we pray the Synod prayer. We stand before you, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as, as we, we gather, gather together, together in your name. name. With, With you, you alone, alone to guide us, make, make yourself, yourself at home in our hearts. hearts. Teach, Teach us the, the way, way we must go and how we are to pursue, pursue it. it. We, we are weak, weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path nor no partiality, partiality influence our, our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Come 
back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. Trees do bend, though straight and tall. So must we to others call. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favour on our supplication, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Save us, Saviour of the world. 
For by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Julian, our Bishop, and all those who are called to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Aloysius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will thy be will done be on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer those nearest a sign of Christ's peace. Peace with you. Peace be with you, Jonas. Peace be with you. John, peace be with you. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away, you take away the sins of all, the sins of all the world. The world. Miserere nobis, Miserere nobis, bread of life, bread of life, you take away, you take away the sins of all, the sins of all.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of all the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, might take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I know it's still a couple of weeks till the first Sunday of the month, but the first Sunday of October is the day when we have um, a blessing of pets. So I'm just uh, warning you or inviting you to um, have uh, your pets at the ready who come to that uh, Mass on the 
first Sunday of uh, October. Unfortunately, we won't have our pet possum this year. Um, <laughs> Andy didn't bequeath that to anybody when he left, so um, so we've uh, no pet possum. But you're I've most got one as well. Have you got a pet possum? Oh yes. Okay. Well, possum, you can bring it. <laughs> A reminder um, in the newsletter, it uh, says that there's no Mass on Wednesday. We have a pastoral conference on Wednesday, and that starts at 9.30. And so getting over the mountain to Newtown between 9.30 and 9.30 is not actually a possibility. So unfortunately, we can't have Mass on Wednesday. The other Masses are in the newsletter, and other information about the parish can be found there as well. Have a great week, and please stay safe. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Spirit of Christ be our hope through the day, be our guard through the night, our companion on the way. Christ be ever before us, Christ be ever behind us, Christ be ever within. May the Spirit of Christ be our hope through the day, be our guard through the night, our companion on the way. Christ upon our left and watching at our right and guiding. Christ above, beneath us, guarding, near to us, abiding. May the Spirit of Christ be our hope through the day, be our guard through the night, our companion on the way.